L'Oréal is a French cosmetics and beauty company, one of the largest in the world, known for its extensive range of products and brands. Today we will explore the growth of L'Oréal from a small French hair dye company to the world's largest cosmetics and beauty corporation, and its impact on beauty trends globally. Eugène Schuller was born on March 20, 1881, in Paris, France. He studied at the College Chaptal and later pursued a degree in chemistry at the College de France. Women have been coloring their hair since ancient times. Egyptians used henna to turn their gray hair to red. The Greeks and Romans used saffron, gold dust, blended flowers and other plant and animal products to embellish their hair with various color tints. The combinations used were natural but the results were short-lived. Chemicals would soon enter common practice, lead for dark-colored hair and sulfuric acid for light-colored hair. They produced better results but they were dangerous to the health of people using them and often even lethal. Everything changed when French chemist and pharmacist Eugène Schuller invented the first synthetic risk-free hair dye for women in 1907. Schuller's early success came from his innovative approach to hair coloring. He worked on improving the formulation of hair dyes, making them more effective and user-friendly. This laid the foundation for L'Oréal's future success in the beauty and cosmetics industry. He used paraphenylenodiamine PPD, a chemical discovered in the previous century and named his innovation, Aurel. Two years later, he founded the Société Française de Tainches Inoffensives pour Chivo, the French company of inoffensive hair dyes, the company that was to become the L'Oréal Group. Eugene Schuller set out to conquer the international market and established a network of sales reps around the globe. His innovative hair dyes were sold to hairdressers and later, pharmacies. L'Oréal initially focused on hair dyes, and by the 1920s, the company had expanded its product line. In 1928, L'Oréal launched its first shampoo, DOP, and continued to innovate in the field of hair care. L'Oréal began expanding internationally in the 1950s, establishing subsidiaries in the United States and other countries. The company's emphasis on research and development led to the introduction of new products, including the first sunscreen, Ambre Solaire, in 1936. L'Oréal continued to innovate and diversify its product offerings. In 1963, the company introduced the first hair coloring shampoo, Preference. L'Oréal also expanded its reach through acquisitions, including the purchase of Lancome in 1964. Under Schuller's leadership, L'Oréal began to expand internationally. By the 1950s, the company had established subsidiaries in the United States and other countries, becoming a global player in the beauty industry. L'Oréal further diversified its portfolio with the acquisition of various beauty and skincare brands, such as Maybelline in 1996 and The Body Shop in 2006. The company's range of products expanded to include makeup, skincare, fragrance, and professional hair care. L'Oréal has placed an increasing emphasis on ethical and sustainable practices. The company has focused on responsible sourcing of raw materials, reducing environmental impact, and promoting diversity and inclusion. L'Oréal has maintained a strong commitment to research and development. The company operates numerous research centers worldwide, and its innovations include advancements in skincare, hair care, and cosmetic formulations. L'Oréal has embraced digital technologies to enhance its consumer experience. The company has invested in e-commerce, digital marketing, and virtual try-on tools, allowing customers to explore products online. L'Oréal's sales were up during the war, during which the company was able to procure the raw materials needed to make its products with help from the occupying forces. Eugene Schuller played a key role in diversifying L'Oréal's product offerings through acquisitions. Notably, the company acquired Lancome in 1964, adding a prestigious luxury brand to its portfolio. The acquisition strategy continued in later years, with L'Oréal acquiring various beauty and skincare brands. Before we continue our story, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget also to turn on the notification bell to be updated in our every uploads. 
In August 23, 1957, Eugene Schuler died. L'Oreal owns a diverse portfolio of brands catering to different market segments. L'Oreal Paris and Garnier target mass market consumers, while luxury brands like Lancome, Yves Saint Laurent Beauté, and Giorgio Armani Beauty cater to high end markets. Eugene Schuler's daughter, Liliane Bettencourt, played a significant role in the company, both as an heiress and as a board member. Liliane Bettencourt became one of the world's wealthiest women due to her inheritance from L'Oréal. Liliane was born in Paris in 1922. She is the only child of L'Oréal founder Eugene Schuler and his wife, Louise. At 15, Liliane became an apprentice at L'Oréal. She labeled bottles and mixed products. In 1950, Liliane married André Bettencourt, the deputy chairman of L'Oréal. After World War II, when Nazis were trying to hide their association with Hitler's movement, Bettencourt, like other members of the fascist group Le Cagoule, were given jobs at L'Oréal. Their daughter Françoise was born in 1953. In 1957, when Liliane was 35, she inherited the entire L'Oréal empire when her father died. Liliane was active at L'Oréal and held a seat on the board of directors until 1995 and was director of the board until February 2012. Her grandson Jean Victor took that position over. During Liliane's years at the helm of the family company, the business expanded through acquiring other companies. Liliane Bettencourt died in 2017, one month shy of her 95th birthday. She owned 30.5% of the outstanding shares of L'Oréal and 29.78% of Nestlé. She also had 12.56% of shares in L'Oréal held in trust for her daughter Françoise. Françoise and husband are also members of the board of directors. Under French law, as Liliane's only heir, at least half of her fortune was to pass on to Françoise upon her death. Today, the company makes more than 500 brands and thousands of products including hair color, makeup, body and skincare, and perfume. It's grown through acquiring companies including The Body Shop, Chinese beauty brand Magic Holdings, Shiseido's Corrida and Decleor brands, NYX Cosmetics, Carol's Daughter, It Cosmetics, and Modi Face, among others. Since 2006, Jean-Paul Agone has been the chairman and chief executive officer of L'Oréal. As of 2013, 33.31% of the company is owned by the Betancourt family, 23.29% of the company is owned by Nestlé, and 21.8% of the company is owned by institutional investors. The remaining 15.3% is owned by French institutional investors, individual investors, and employees. L'Oréal remains one of the world's leading beauty companies, with a strong global presence and a commitment to innovation, sustainability, and inclusivity. L'Oréal's history is marked by a continual commitment to innovation, international expansion, and the acquisition of iconic brands. The company has played a significant role in shaping the beauty and cosmetics industry on a global scale. Eugene Schuler is remembered as the visionary founder who transformed a small company focused on hair dyes into a global beauty giant. His emphasis on research, innovation, and international expansion set the stage for L'Oréal's continued success in the beauty and cosmetics industry. His legacy lives on through L'Oréal, which remains a dominant force in the beauty and cosmetics market, offering a wide range of products under various brand names. And that's the wrap of our story for today. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and also please press the notification bell to be updated in our every uploads.